So in this video we're looking at reflection of light in plane mirrors. So setting up, this is going to be our mirror um, and to show the non-reflective side we sort of shade uh, shade on that side. So let's just be clear that's the non-reflective non-reflective side. Okay. Um, we also need this thing called the normal um, which is a very useful construct. The normal is perpendicular to the surface and it's represented by a dotted line. Draw the dotted line all the way through sometimes um, because uh, mostly you're dealing with refraction when you're doing that but let's just make this absolutely clear. There's a little right angle sign there to show that it is 90 degrees perpendicular. Okay so now uh, let's draw us an, uh, a light ray coming into uh, and, and the reason we've got that normal there is that's where our light ray hits the surface of the mirror. And we draw arrows on our light rays to show the direction that they're traveling. Um, and remember we're drawing light rays because we know that visible light can be uh, approximated as a straight line, traveling in straight lines. One of the pro uh, properties of light when you're considering this model of light is that it does travel in straight lines. And the evidence for that is seen in a pinhole camera, um, which you should have, well, yeah, it was in an earlier video, if I remember to put it in. Um, in any case, um, what's going to happen is we measure the angle of incidence theta i as our, our incoming angle for the light and we have a rule to tell us where the reflected light will go and that is that the angle of incidence, we'll write this down here, the angle of incidence i theta i equals the angle of reflection theta r and this is what we might call our equal angle law so that we can see our Reflected ray, oops, there's theta, I'm drawing it on a slight angle compared to where the screen is oriented for you. Um, so as I was saying, uh, theta i is equal to theta r in this case. Um, and, well, it always will be when you're dealing with reflection. I've drawn that ray a little bit inaccurately at that point where it hits the mirror, but they both should hit at the base of the normal. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what we're dealing with, the normal, the angle labels. And we now know how to draw rays using our equal angle law. So the tricky part is when it comes to finding the image of something. Okay, I'm just going to shift down and start again with another mirror down here. And here's our mirror. Here's our shaded side again to show that this is the non-reflective side. And, and our normal. Um, I'm actually going to draw two normals because we're going to deal with two rays. Um, here is my, uh, what colour should we draw? We'll, we'll stick with red. Here's my object, it's just an arrow representing the object. doesn't matter where I put it at the moment. But how we uh, deal with our, uh, our object is we have to consider the light rays that are striking it and um, where they're coming from and where they're going to. Okay, so uh, remember at, a, at any single point on an object light rays are spreading out in all directions from that point at 360 degrees but in a sphere not just in a circle. So uh, if you think of a light sitting in the middle of a dark room that light that's when it's switched on is sending light out in all directions. That's how it's uh, able to light up the room. When you cast shadows, it, it's blocking that particular direction. In any case, we're looking at this. Um, we're going to have to consider two light rays from the top, and, um, and and follow the equal angle law to show where they come from. And we're going to have to consider two light rays from the bottom of the object, and that'll give us the location of the object's top and the object's bottom as an image. So let's go ahead and try that. This is going to be a little bit rough because I can't use a ruler on here, um, but we'll see how we go. So that's one light ray, and it reflects according to the equal angle law. So it's going to be quite a shallow bend this way. Um, okay, and the other light ray to our other normal, maybe I should, in fact I will, I'm going to draw um, a, a second or a third normal all the way down here and we'll use this. It doesn't matter where I draw them because uh, there's light coming out in all directions but the further away they are the more likely they are to give us a, a decent representation 
of our location. So here is, oh, I've done that terribly, but you'll get the idea. And according to the equal angle law, is roughly the same angle coming off. Okay, and now where I, where I want to find out where the image is, where the peak of the image is, I have to go backwards from that location. So dotted lines, these are different from your dotted lines of your um, of your normal. These are virtual light rays, and they're where light rays appear to come from. So dotted lines, virtual light. <laughs> so it's nothing special, it's just a model to help us work out where it would have been. So this point here is the top, roughly speaking, of our... Um, it's roughly because my diagram is rough, but it is where it would be if you were using a ruler, where the top of our image would be. So we're going to change colour now, and I'll go to, to purple, and we're going to consider two light rays coming from the bottom of our object. So we'll go to the same two normals, just because um, that's a... A convenient way to approach it so I've done this very terribly but there's our incoming light ray and our outgoing light ray should have the same angle of incidence uh, angle of reflection okay and um, then uh, we've got our other normal down the bottom here very shallow one so angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection and now we need to follow back those uh, light rays to see where they appear to come from. Oops, I'm not drawing this particularly well, but you're getting the idea. Okay, so that there is the bottom where I'm drawing the circle. And the green circle up here is where the top of the image is. So if we draw this, I'll draw it in an orange, top to bottom, this is how we would see our image. Remember, because this is also the tricky bit, is conceiving of where you're looking from. Um, and let's just shrink that a little bit. If you are standing here, this is your eye on a side view, and you're, you're looking out into the mirror in this direction. So you're seeing these light rays coming back. And where those light rays appear to come from, where those dotted lines go back to, is over here. On the, on the opposite side of the mirror, an equal, equal distance um, from it. So, uh, when we're drawing our images, we should consider the nature of the image. In this case, it's the same size, so the magnification m is equal to 1. The magnification is a ratio of the distance of the image over the distance of the object, or the height of the image, over the height of the object. In this case, in a plane mirror, it's the same. There's no magnifying effect um, and no diminishing effect. Um, so the magnification is 1. The, uh, this is an upright. Sometimes mirrors will turn uh, images upside down. This one doesn't. It's upright. And the last thing we have to consider is um, whether it's virtual or real. Virtual means it's made of those virtual dotted light rays. And real means it's made from real light rays like we see on this side. Okay, so that's real. These ones, virtual. Okay, so uh, in this case, it would be virtual. Because they're made of non-real light rays. And that's how you would find the image of an object. In a, in a mirror. A plain mirror, in any case. We have a few more tricky ones when we start dealing with curved mirrors, which you're going to see shortly. Uh, but most of this is geometry, where you stick with those equal angle laws, uh, and uh, and just following a, a couple of um, simple conventions. But you'll see how they go anyway. Thank you.